Hi everyone, my name's Autumn and I work to talk with our amazing students and alumni here at Penn Foster. Today I'm talking with Hannah Rogers, who's in our veterinary technician program. Hannah works as a vet assistant at Gun Animal Hospital in Virginia. She's been enrolled in our program and is here to talk about anything and everything about enrolling with Penn Foster. So whether you're new to Penn Foster or thinking about enrolling, Hannah's gonna help answer some of your questions. Hi, Hannah. Hi, it's so nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you so much for talking with me. So Hannah, I know you're an incredible student. You're an ambassador as well, and we're going to get into that. Um, and you also have a vet tech channel where you talk about your Penn Foster experience and a little bit about working in the field. So um, I'm just going to mention that so people can find you on your YouTube channel if they wanted to hear more about you. So Hannah, first question, why did you decide to enroll with Penn Foster? I decided to enroll with Penn Foster because I had had a couple of previous experiences with um, traditional like brick and mortar colleges. I had previously um, wanted to be a veterinarian and so I'd been pursuing that and I did not do well in that type of environment and I couldn't necessarily afford to continue trying through that environment as well. Um, so then when I decided I wanted to go to school to be a veterinary technician, I had looked at a couple of other online distance learning programs. I'd actually enrolled in one and it was less than ideal. Um, they were more of a physical college campus. And so the online structuring was kind of rough and really difficult to get a hold of someone, difficult to navigate and to make sense of overall. And so I discontinued that one and I found Penn Foster online um, through some Google searches, honestly. And when I found them, I truly thought it was too good to be true. And I found that they were accredited and they were a lot more affordable than other options I had seen. And so that was basically the point I decided to try and uh, start going to school there. And that was the point in which I enrolled. That's great. And we're so happy you did. So when you decided to enroll, what what did you, what were the next steps you take? Did you reach out to student services? How did you enroll with us? I actually enrolled online um, and it was incredibly easy. I thought it was a little too easy <laughs> to enroll because I did it like in the middle of the night. I was like, OK, I'm just going to see how this works. I'm going to see if it's legit and if I like the structure of the program and everything. And I'm pretty sure it took less than 10 minutes. Um, but it was really easy. It wasn't a super in-depth lengthy process. There wasn't a lot of um, like requiring to get a bunch of different information, a bunch of different papers that I had experienced at traditional brick and mortar colleges and location colleges before. And there wasn't like a huge waiting period. I basically signed up online and within 10 minutes, I could already start looking through all of my course information, the courses I had for that semester, and all of the resources, which I think is really amazing. Yeah, that's great. And it's super easy to enroll online, so we're, we're glad you did. And then um, once you enrolled, what was the first thing that you went and did as an st official student? I believe the first thing that I did was take the um, pre-assessments for English and math, and I did those right away. And then after that, I started looking at the um, first module in semester one for the veterinary technician program, which I believe is introduction to veterinary technology. Um, it was a while ago, so the details are slightly fuzzy, but I do remember that I was looking through the study guide. I was really excited about how easily it was to access the study guide and that I, I did sign up for the online books as well. So I was really excited that I got access to the ebooks right away. I didn't have to wait for anything. And I'm kind of an impatient person, which is another reason why I was set on this self-paced program, because I can take a break when I want to, and then I can just power through information at my own pace and I don't really need to wait on anyone. Um, but basically looking through the course modules and everything was the first thing I did. And then I started to look a little bit more at what the other classes were and what I was going to be doing for those as well. That's great. And um, about the student portal. So you pretty much jumped right in. Can you tell me your thoughts on the student portal and navigating it? And was it user friendly? Can you give me a little bit about your experience? And I think this will be especially helpful for students maybe considering enrolling, knowing what they're getting into. I I compare everything to 
what I experienced as um, going to school at a brick and mortar college because I feel I I had always felt like the way that they did things online was just so convoluted and it would take you like three links before you actually got to a dashboard or a portal of any sort. Um, but for Penn Foster, it was pretty much all straightforward. I really enjoy the home screen because it shows you the like how far you are percentage wise, what your start date for the degree was, and how long you have for that or for that semester or that block as well. And I was kind of exploring that at first. And then that's when I went to the um, my courses area, which is where I found the different modules and different study guides. And then I started to explore a little bit more on the resources tab as well, which I think is really helpful and underutilized because they have a bunch of recorded webinars and you don't necessarily have to be in the class in order to watch those webinars. So I would watch a lot of those for like the anesthesia classes and stuff when I started learning that at work and I wasn't there yet in my schooling. So I had definitely done a lot of digging there. And then also the community, which had switched from a different platform than the one I had originally been on when I first started as a student. And so that portal switched. And I definitely think the community now is a lot more functional and easy to navigate than the one previously. Um, but that's basically where I was kind of focused on when I first enrolled and when I was first getting to know the program and everything. Yeah, that's great. And regarding the student portal and enrolling, what do you wish you knew when you signed up that you think might help other students get started now? I think one of the first things I wish I had known was about those lectures because I didn't find those out until later on. And I believe I was in one of the later classes, anatomy and physiology one and two was when I first figured it out, but I believe biology is before that. And I kind of struggled through biology, even though I'd taken it a couple of times. And when I hit anatomy and physiology, all of the lectures were already there. And so I just watched a lot of them like on my way to work or listen to them on my way to work or I would wake up early and just um, listen to one of those before lunch and listening to that information um, was part of how I studied at that period of time and I would take notes on it and everything. So I feel like that is one of the biggest tips um, Cohen's or like alongside the community as well. I didn't start using the community until I became a, an ambassador, which I believe was around the same time when I was doing anatomy and physiology. So it was all kind of like six months after I had started. And once I found the community, I was asking questions to other students and it was really easy to search and see if somebody had already asked the same question as me. So I didn't have to wait for a response or come back and check later. I could just kind of search through that. So those would be my two biggest tips um, for people just starting and people just starting to dig through the resources and dig through all the things that the um, Penn Foster dashboard has to offer. Yeah, and those are some really great tips. And I like that you touched on um, that we're so flexible and you can listen to lectures as you're heading to work and really find time to study and get in your schoolwork um, really around your schedule and also the student community. We really stress that while this is an online learning environment, you're not alone. So um, it's great that you were able to make those connections and ask questions within there. So if you got stuck on something and you had a, a question, how did you contact an instructor? Or how did you get any help that you needed? The main way that I would contact the school would be calling because again, I'm a little impatient. So if it was like a something, I, I had emailed the school recently about something that I forget, but I was like, okay, I can wait a couple of days to hear back on this. Like, that's fine. And then I'll email them. And in my experience, it's never taken more than a day or two to, to have a response, even if it's someone saying, I'm going to look into that for you. And for the calling, I feel like it was always a very straightforward. I have been fortunate enough to call at the right times. And I first struggled because I lived on Pacific Standard Time and not Eastern Standard Time. So I could only ever really call my lunch hour, but I, there was always people there to help me. And they're super flexible. They're super knowledgeable. 
knowledgeable. And if they don't know, they're happy to find out for you. And I really like that they're able to email resources as well um, because you know, there was a time where I couldn't find a syllabus for one of my classes and I had called them and asked for it and she just pulled it up and emailed it to me within a couple of minutes. And so it was super helpful and super immediate and um, a lot more straightforward than uh, what I had experienced before. Yeah, that's great. And for students who haven't enrolled yet or maybe just recently enrolled, can you just touch on where you can find um, how to reach out to Penn Foster? The um, area that you can reach out to Penn Foster, I believe, is on the left hand side of your dashboard when you log in. And if you scroll down, it says contact us and you have a couple of different options because you can call in and they give you the phone number. You can email, uh, which I believe you just submit a question that way, kind of like the contact fields and you put your info in and then submit it or if it's during a specific number of hours, a specific time where the instructors or personnel are available to help you, you can also do the chat option. I haven't personally done that because I'm usually doing this at night or on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So people aren't usually around during those times, but I've kind of fiddled around with it. And it looks pretty easy because you just click the drop down menus and they're pretty instructive on where you can find the information, like if you need help with accounting or if you need help within your specific program, it'll have a drop down menu of all of that. So it's pretty self explanatory and pretty easy to get in contact with someone. Yeah, that's great. And back to the student community, can you tell me a little bit more about how you utilize that and maybe some spaces that you check recommend students check out? The places that I usually spend the most amount of time, I will usually spend the most amount of time in the veterinary technology area, which is my area of focus, of course. So I'll usually go through there and see if anybody needs help or if I have a particular thing that I'm struggling with, I'll also post that on there. And I will also definitely check out the ambassador area as well. I believe that's called Meet the Ambassadors. And that's a really awesome place to find ambassadors from other programs too. And if you're not really sure if you're looking in your own little programs module and you can't really find an or find an ambassador or if you want more information from the ambassadors in general, like if you're looking for motivation or if you're looking for like personal stories about Penn Foster, I would definitely recommend checking out Meet the Ambassador space. And I believe in the Meet the Ambassador space, there's also Community Post too, which is a student run a newsletter that they put out every month. And there's different topics every month too. I find reading everybody else's articles in there really helpful and inspiring and motivating. So I feel like those are the main areas just because we go to school online, so we don't have the same sort of community and the same sort of um, like network that we would if we went to school in person. So it's really awesome to kind of get that experience just by going to school online. Yeah, I'm so great. You I'm so glad you mentioned that. And there are um, other spaces on the community, um, like Hannah mentions, the vet tech program is specific to her. So there's a vet tech space, but there is also um, early childhood education, um, design and creative spaces, really any programs that we have at Penn Foster, you can find um, other students within that program and spaces on the community. Um, but yes, the Meet the Ambassador space is a great place to check out. And if you're new to Penn Foster and really looking for some of the ins and outs, the Meet the Ambassador space is great. And the community post that they do monthly is chock full of information and Hannah contributes as well. And there's some really great articles in there. So Hannah, about the Ambassador program, can you tell us a little bit about it and um, maybe how ambassadors help students and, and so on? Yeah, so the ambassador program is where essentially I like to think of it as like the student council for Penn Foster because that's kind of what it is. But we kind of do like student outreach and 
we are in charge of helping other students, motivating them, and helping guide them through things we might have experienced ourselves. Or if, for instance, I see somebody struggling with a particular piece of information from a degree program I know nothing about, we would get into contact with ambassadors from that space and find resources from them to kind of try to help troubleshoot that. Um, but the ambassadorship is a really great program and I would definitely recommend if you're interested in helping other students to try to enroll in that. But um, for the ambassador space, it is really helpful, like on the community, we'll go through and kind of monitor, monitor that and see if anybody's looking for help or needing help there. And also, I know particularly in the veterinary technician group, the ambassadors are also the ones who kind of moderate that, see if people need help, make sure people are following guidelines and everything like that. Um, but it's a really great way to get more community sort of feeling out of Penn Foster since we do go to school online, like I mentioned previously. And so it kind of helps build that network and build um, build up your resources with each other. Yeah, that's great. And it's so true. And the ambassadors are really um, great motivators and mentors. Um, and they, like Hannah said, monitor the community and answer any questions that you have. The community also has a really great Q&A space. Um, so if there's a question that you have that maybe you're, you don't want to call in yet and you want to see if anyone's asked on the community already, you can go through that and see what's answered. And the ambassadors do a really great job of keeping up on that and helping with that space as well. So Hannah, aside from maybe reaching out in the community and finding uh, people on there and, mentor and mentoring on there, how do you stay motivated while learning at your own pace? I feel like this question was the most difficult one since it changes from time to time, but the most like congruent things that I do for myself are to put little reminders for myself throughout the space because I get really overwhelmed when I think about all the things I have to do in this amount of time in order to finish my degree. And I think about all the classes and all the tests and everything I have to do. And so I get really overwhelmed. And so thinking about the big picture is truly what motivates me. And I'm lucky enough that I get to work in the same space that I'm going to be working in and that I'm going to school to work in. So that also helps motivate me, but I will definitely keep little sticky notes with encouragements, even like on my mirror, on my desk, on my laptop, I even have stickers that are motivating. And I also have them on my laptop background, on my phone. I just try to have little bits of encouragement throughout my life. So it's kind of um, continuing to push me and I'll also follow people on social media or follow people on Facebook and become friends with people on Facebook who are also in school to try to also kind of see other people motivated and then that kind of inspires me. And the other thing I would definitely recommend is try, or that I personally do is when I get overwhelmed thinking about the big picture, when I get overwhelmed thinking about all the things I have to do that kind of kills my motivation. So I try to remember that I can't worry about those bridges I'll have to cross in the future, but to just focus on the one I have at hand. And that is something I'm definitely trying to do more because I don't feel like I do it enough and it's all a work in progress, but I feel like just surrounding yourself with little bits of motivation can definitely help you remember the bigger picture and why you're going through all this school and why you're waking up early and you know, doing schoolwork on your lunch and when you get home and it's just your whole life. And it definitely helps reinvigorate that and re-motivate me. Um, so that's what I would definitely recommend. And also I would recommend reaching out to other students because you're definitely not alone. I feel like that's one of the things that is hardest about going to school online is that you're secluded and you don't have that network. So again, you know, going on the community or going on your department's Facebook group, um, I think that's really helpful and really helps push you along. And I also definitely follow um, Penn Foster on social media too, because they'll definitely post motivational things that I'll need to hear whenever they post them. So that's helpful as well. 
Yeah, that's great. Penn Foster Social is always sharing motivation and other um, student success, which helps motivate students, I feel like. So that's great. But um, so I like that you said helping maybe um, concentrate on what you're doing in the now instead of getting overwhelmed. So I feel like setting things up in little chunks is what I always hear students say work for them. Um, and it makes it a little more easier to de decompress and, and really focus on what you need to get done to move on to the next step and eventually graduate, which is of course the goal. Um, so those were some great tips. Are there any study tips that you can give students? I would definitely recommend to look into passive versus active studying because for the first, I'd say, year I was going to school, I was just doing passive studying, which looks like how I mentioned earlier, where I just listened to lectures, like if I was cooking or if I was cleaning, I would just be listening. And when I would take notes, I would copy a lot of the textbook down almost word for word, which is good for repetition, but it doesn't really engage your mind and it's not really creating those connections inside your brain to remember the information. So active learning looks more like if you are reading a chapter and then you write down a summary. Or one of the things I would really, really recommend is looking at the objectives of the study guide and of the chapters. And I write those down as little like self check questions. And then when I'm done with the unit or when I'm halfway through, I'll go through and write down the answers. And sometimes even when I'm halfway through or when I read a piece of information that I remember was one of the objectives, I'll write that down. And so that it's definitely a lot more work in the moment. And it can be harder to push yourself through that if you're not feeling motivated to do the studying. But it definitely takes me less time in the long run to study in this way as opposed to the passive studying because I was listening to lectures in the morning, during my lunch, at night. I was listening to them all the time and just writing down, you know, almost the whole chapter and it wasn't really sticking in my head as well. And so the learning about the active learning has definitely helped a lot more. Um, so I would definitely encourage students to look into that a little bit more, find out what their learning style is too, because you can um, individualize the active studying approach to your specific learning style as well. So that's kind of where I would start since everybody's different and everybody's going to like different methods. But the active learning has definitely been the biggest thing that I've found useful. So yeah, that's a great tip. That's definitely helpful. And you're right, everyone uh, learns a little differently. So whether it's active le learning what Hannah touched on or maybe some flashcards or um, maybe even studying with some music, everyone learns a little bit differently and you'll really get into the groove once you get started. So Hannah, what's your favorite thing about learning online? My favorite thing about learning online is that I can go at my own space or uh, I can go at my own speed. So I do a lot of studying during the weekend and I'll do a lot of schoolwork during the weekend and in the morning and on my lunches. But then at night, I don't touch schoolwork at all. And I sometimes go a whole, you know, four or five days, a whole work week without touching my schoolwork. And I am very grateful that I am allowed to do that. And I'm also grateful that I am able to work full time while going to school as well, because um, at the particular practice I work at, there are other people who go to a physical college there. And I'm just so grateful I don't have to worry about driving to classes or trying to navigate online webinars when the college was not meant to be online. And so everybody's kind of struggling through this with um, COVID-19 and everything. So having a school that's already meant to be online, all the resources are already online and it's there when I need it is really awesome. And it's a lot or it's very customizable too. So I can break up the units how I need to. And that really helps me kind of power through the weeks um, and get more done in a period of time if I'm feeling super productive or just get a little bit done because I'm a little burnt out and I need a break. So that's probably my favorite thing. Yeah, that's great. The going at your own pace is definitely, definitely the key. And then what's your favorite thing about your program that you're in? I would say my favorite thing about the program is the like really deep knowledge that I'm learning. And I really enjoy 
learning about all the in-depth processes that go into veterinary medicine. And it's a little overwhelming or it's a lot overwhelming, but it's all really great information. And I really like that the instructors are real world like veterinary professionals too. And they talk a lot about their own personal experiences in veterinary medicine. And I feel like that's really beneficial. And um, one of the things I really like that the instructors talk about is the importance in the long run of being detail oriented. And that's also kind of a common theme I see throughout the prompts for my essays or throughout the information I'm even reading in textbooks. It's all about being detail oriented and being careful because we have a lot of responsibility with the job that we do. And so I really love that people still get an idea that we need to be detail oriented, even if they're not physically working in the environment, because I feel like there are some people who come into the field very green and then they might make mistakes because they haven't been focusing as much as being detail oriented. So I'm grateful that Penn Foster starts um, teaching you that right out the gate. Yeah, definitely. So you're working in the field. How do you feel like Penn Foster helped prepare you for work? I definitely feel like Penn Foster has provided me with a lot of information and I feel like in some of the lectures that Dr. James Hurrell, I believe I'm pronouncing his name right, does, he talks a lot about different presentations of animals too and how the clinical findings you find are different from the things you read in the textbook. And so how, you know, you might see some images that are great pictures of certain cells or certain smears, but you're not always going to get that representation in the clinic. You're very rarely going to get that representation. And so I feel like listening to those lectures and listening to those people talk helps prepare me for the idea that not everything's going to be super easy to, um, visualize and super easy to understand right off the bat. And I definitely feel like the ethics and professionalism um, webinars that he does as well have definitely helped me. Um, but overall, just the information has definitely been incredibly influential and it's given me a great foundation of learning so that when I was in a place, when I was learning how to be a tech assist and learning the job of being a veterinary technician, I was in a place where I already knew about doing dentals through reading in the textbook and through taking that portion of the course. And so all I had to do was learn how to physically do it. And it made it a lot less stressful on me when I already knew the fundamentals and I could learn the physical aspect because if you try to learn both at the same time, it's very overwhelming <laughs> and it's a lot to learn. And I feel like that's the hardest part of the job is learning how to do it physically. So it's really helpful that I started ahead of the game and I was about a semester in already when I started learning how to do things physically. Um, so that would be my biggest tip. I know that's a little all over the place, but just the knowledge in general is super, super helpful. No, that's definitely great. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Helping you read and learn and study the material really translated to you um, knowing what to do and, and making a little bit better, better once you got in the field. So what skills did you learn um, at Penn Foster that maybe you're using as a vet assistant every day? So I feel like I've used so many of them. I definitely think that one of the things that's kind of underplayed is the importance of veterinary technicians, because when I was doing the veterinary technician introduction um, course, I feel like it was really focused on having the veterinary technicians know their responsibilities. And so I remember being intrigued at first that we had to learn how to do general assessments and, um, you know, do basic physical assessments as well, as well as like mentation assessments and pain scale assessments, because at that point I had thought that that was something only the veterinarian did, but it helped me learn that we're kind of a catch-all. And so we're responsible for double checking medications. We're responsible for knowing what they do. We're responsible for understanding if something's wrong with an animal as soon as they walk in the door so we can flag that doctor. And 
that's not something you could necessarily learn in person. I feel like that's something that you kind of have to learn and understand by reading about it first, and then you get to see it in action and it makes a lot more sense. Um, so I definitely use that skill. And again, back to being detail oriented, I think understanding the why behind something is the difference between somebody who's good at their job and somebody that, that is great at their job in this particular field. Because if you know how to do a particular skill, that's great. But if you're not knowing why, and if you don't know when to not do that or when to flag the doctor, then you can get into some hairy situations, which of course you want to avoid. So I feel like knowing the why and the fact that Penn Foster makes us know everything um, from like the beginning of the processes all the way to the end, I think it's really helpful um, because it gives me a thorough um, idea of what I'm going to be doing in the field. Um, so I would definitely <laughs> say that that's the biggest thing I take away from this program. That's great. And then um, what's the next steps for you and on your career path? I am a couple classes away from being finished with the fourth semester or getting to the externship part. And so I am going to be doing my externship in hopefully a couple of months. And then I will hopefully be taking the VTNE in July or August and then um, applying for licensure in the state of Virginia in um, after I get those results back. So I'm kind of towards the tail end. I feel like I'm towards the tail end, but also with with the externship, I know I'm not out of the woods yet. So I have a lot to do in the next several months, but I'm very excited that I'm almost done and I do plan on doing the bachelor's program later on, but I'm excited to have some time in between to rest and not have to worry about school for a little while. That's awesome. And definitely best of luck to you as you're starting to wrap up and, and get out into the field. We're so excited for you. So Hannah, to wrap up our um, interview today, I want to ask you, what is your favorite thing about being a Penn Foster student? I think my favorite thing about being a Penn Foster student is that this school gives people who might have alternative um, backgrounds or might not have the same opportunities to be able to go to a university or to be able to even go to a community college and afford that. I think that that is one of the greatest things about this program because I, like I said before, I didn't do well in a brick and mortar college. I wasn't able to continue to do that financially because I wasn't in a spot where I had the money to pay for the semesters as they came, even with financial aid. So I definitely find so much value in this program and not just the program, but the school itself, because it's giving people with alternative backgrounds and um, people who might not have accessibility to the same resources that people who are more well off have access to. And so I know it's not, you know, necessarily related to the knowledge itself, but I think it's amazing that they give people the opportunity to go out and reach higher education, even if they didn't come from traditional backgrounds. So I definitely think that's my favorite thing about Penn Foster, because I don't know if I would be here it, as far and as successful in my career so far um, without this school, just because it gave me such a great opportunity to level up my career, to help, you know, make more connections with people and to just, you know, become more successful while I do the things that I love. So that was a great answer. And of course, we're so happy to have you as a Penn Foster student. Hannah, thank you so much for talking with me today and taking the time. Thank you. I really enjoyed ask or answering all your questions.